This week on The Grill, we have a hot and fast take on some traditional pork spare ribs. We've had a lot of requests over the last couple months to do some traditional recipes so people can take them and make them their own at home. And that's exactly what we're gonna to do today. Today we're gonna to be doing some St. Louis style ribs out of a traditional pork full spare rib. But we're gonna do a little bit different. We're gonna do a hot and fast take on it. So instead of doing a five or six hour rib, we're gonna do these ribs in about two and a half or three hours. Let's get started. Now, if you're like me, you like ribs any which way you can get them. Low and slow, hot and fast, nice and tender with a steakier bite on them. All of them are really good. And we're gonna kick these off today with a St. Louis style trim. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this. These are full pork spare ribs. And what that means is not only is it just the rack of ribs right here, but it also includes the chime bone and this piece of meat up here that we're gonna go ahead and get rid of. Now, if you have a bag at home that you keep in the freezer, some trimmings that you turn into sausage, it's a great use for it. Or you can trim it up and throw it in some beans to add some extra flavor. Today, we're just gonna move it out of the way because we wanna focus on these ribs and get these as pretty as they possibly can be. Now, what makes spare ribs a St. Louis style rib is a heavy trim. So you can see a full spare rib is not quite square, not quite rectangle. It's kind of an oblong shape. It's got a lot of these little loose pieces hanging off of it. And we just want to trim all these up, mainly for uniformity. So the first initial cut I like to make on the back is I trim off all this skirt meat. Now again, if you're making sausage or something at home, this is all good meat for you to use. We just want to get rid of it right now because it is not going to help us in our spare rib cook. When we're doing something hot and fast like we are too, we want to get rid of all the extra stuff we don't need because the more meat's on there, the longer it takes for it to cook. Now that the skirt's gone, we're going to go ahead and locate the chine bone, which is right here at the top. This bone runs right here, but it's connected with cartilage all the way down to these rib tips. And we want to get in there and separate that entire section. So what I like to do is come in here and find about the longest rib you can, which is somewhere around three quarters of the way through. And you feel around with your finger until you can feel where that rib ends. And we're going to go ahead and make a cut right there. If you've got a good sharp knife like I have in this boning knife, you're going to be able to separate these right at the end of those ribs. And then you're going to go square off this entire rack all the way down until that piece is completely separated. So you're just going to take this and remove it. So you can already tell these ribs now are squaring up a lot better than they were. We're going to go a step further here too because as these bones start to taper off down here, you have a lot of extra flat meat that's just going to burn up. It's not going to cook real evenly. So we want to come and find what is the most viable rib that we can end this rack on. And right now I think it's gonna be about there. There's a full bone right there and it starts to taper off into mini bones down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut right here at the end and take this extra flat meat again. If you wanna save it, put it in a bag, freeze it, that's great. Now that right there is a square cut of St. Louis ribs. Now we can come in here, as much effort as you wanna give, you can trim up, remove a little bit of this fat, skin that's kind of hanging out, just to kind of make it a little bit cleaner. Remember, rub adheres to meat more than it adheres to fat. So the more of that fat you remove, the easier the rub is gonna go ahead and stick to it. But that's really all you need to do. Now, if these ribs were highly inconsistent, meaning one side was a lot higher than the other, we could come in here and shave this down as well because you want all of that to cook at the same time. So when you pull them, they're all done at the same time. These are good to go. So they're nice and trimmed up. They're good and clean. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. Whoa, 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 we're gonna pull the membrane. If I was cooking at 225 degrees, it might be a good idea to pull that membrane because it's gonna stay there. But I'm cooking these around 275 to 300 today. So that membrane is gonna get a little crispy and eventually peel off or burn off in the cook. So I'm not that worried about it. Two, personally, I like to leave my membranes on because it holds the ribs together throughout the entire cook. If I make a mistake and slightly overcook these, that membrane's gonna keep them together. So when I cut them, everything doesn't kind of fall apart into pulled pork. So I like leaving them on. If you wanna take them off at home, you're more than welcome to. The way you do that is to take a knife, put it in here around the middle bone and go ahead and lift up the skin. Work your finger under it and grab a paper towel and grab the skin because the paper towel dries the skin off and pull that membrane off. Again, we're not gonna do it today because personally, I like to leave them on. The seasonings we're gonna use today, 
We're going to do these two different ways. Both of them are going to get a generous coat on the front end of Hardcore Carnivore Amplify. It's a good umami kind of a flavor boost that I love putting on a lot of different stuff. And we might as well put some on the ribs. We're going to put it in the wrap today too. But I like using it as a base on top of my ribs because it just gives it a lot of punch of flavor. Okay, flip them over. We're going to do the backside too. Now again, because the membrane's on there, I'm not really concerned about hitting this backside real heavy because most of the seasoning is just going to burn up. But on the off chance that something doesn't and you end up eating some of that meat that's on the backside here, I want to make sure it's got a good flavor for you. A little bit of a pat. All right, and back over. Now as those are tacking up, we're using two different rubs today. One of them is gonna be the Hasty Bake Rub and Spice. It is an amazing general purpose barbecue rub. It's got some great sweetness to it. If you put it heavy, it's got a little bit of a kick on it. It also happened to win some pretty big awards back in the day. So it's always something I keep in my cabinet and I use quite a bit. We're gonna go ahead and hit this with that Rub and Spice. I don't worry about over seasoning ribs. I go pretty heavy on my seasoning. One, because as you handle these ribs, that seasoning is going to knock off on the grill when you're moving things around and all that. So I never worry about putting too much seasoning on them unless it's a very, very high salt content seasoning. And then you might be a little careful just so you don't over salt them. Pork has a lot of sodium in it on its own. And just for kicks and grins, we're going to hit this other one with a Hasty Weight Gourmet Greek Seasoning. Again, this is great on chicken, might as well be good on pork. It's got some honey powder in it, some oregano, some bell pepper. It's just a completely different flavor profile than the normal ribs that you cook. And I love experiment with it, so we're going to go ahead and use it today. With a hot and fast method that we're using today, stuff like this is great because we're going to have a little bit more bark than you would normally have on your ribs. And it's going to have a touch more steaky bite than kind of a fall apart rib. That's the benefit of doing the hot and fast. I also like keeping my rubs not too sweet on a hot and fast method because when they get too sweet all that sugar ends up burning up so we go with a little less on the sugar content and a little more on the salt and herb content when you're doing a hot and fast rib this rub smells phenomenal these are good to go on the Hastings behind me Ta -da! he's holding around 300 which is right where I want him to hold we're going to put these on the offset side. I'll show you how I built the fire in him. Just kind of in a horseshoe shape with some fire brick in the middle to make a nice, long, slow burn. But we're going to keep this thing around 275 to 300 today. We're going to flip it kind of frequently about every 20 or 30 minutes. We're starting with the bone side down, meat side up at 300. been about two hours or so. I told you we're shooting for about three hours on these ribs. What I've done so far is come in about every 30 minutes, add a little bit of butter as you've seen, kind of coated them down so that it continues to make a sheen, melts over it, adds some of that fat, adds some caramelization to it. I kept things offset for a little while, then I flipped them back over. I got a good kind of a crusty bark on the top side of them. We're going to flip them back over and move them over for a couple minutes. Now, the foil trick. What we're going to do on these is not real complicated. I like to double foil all my ribs so that if the bone pokes through, it doesn't end up leaking out. So we'll do one layer of foil and then two. Now, a lot of people can do this with uh, butcher paper, which is fine. Parchment paper works too. I'm a foil fan. It adds some heat to it, kind of oven bakes them on the inside. We're just going to do a couple things to our foil to prepare them for the ribs. One is I'm going to go ahead and take some local honey. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of drizzle on top of the foil. I'm going meat side down on this foil. I don't want my ribs to be over sickly sweet at all, but this honey adds a nice little glaze to it. We're also coming back in with Hardcore Card Over Amplify. We're just going to give a little bit of topper in there too. Want a little extra umame for our flavor. 
Nothing too crazy. If you want to use some sauce, you can put some sauce in here too. I tend to shy away from them a little bit just because the sugar likes to burn. And we're going to go back on with these for probably another 45 minutes or so. But if you want to put some sauce in here, just kind of lightly, you know, drizzle it with sauce. That's completely fine too. We're going to pull the first rack off. Right there, we're going meat side down on the rack. Again, we're double foiled. I come in here, do a fold over once, do a fold over twice, fold your ends in. It's like you're wrapping a present. Now again, we don't want the bones to poke through, but I do like to wrap these real tight. If you end up having loose foil, all the juices and the rendered fat from your ribs will soak down into the bottom of the foil and they'll pool up. Now as they hit the heat, all that liquid is gonna start bubbling and boiling and it's gonna steam your ribs. You'll end up with a really tender rib, but it also kind of has a pot roasty, kind of a no bark flavor. I wanna keep that bark. I've worked really, really hard to maintain that bark. So the tighter you wrap your foil, the less room there is for all that liquid to pool. It stays inside the meat and continues to cook the meat from the inside out leaving you with a really good bark one more rack to go that racks getting close already you see how that's bending when it's totally done that rack is going to be completely limp which is what we're looking for these are actually pretty close I'm going to put them in the grill here for about half an hour and then I'll start checking them I normally go 45 minutes but the way that one's bending is telling me that it's getting pretty close to done we're going meat side down Still offset from the fire, but meat side down to get all that juice to kind of tender up in the meat, not in the bone side. Back on the grill, we'll check it again in about half an hour here, pull them off. If they're done, they're done. If not, I'm gonna go ahead and open them up out of the foil, flip them back over, let them breathe a little bit. We'll watch them like that to the end of the cook. Let's see how they turn out. everybody here's the moment we've been waiting for these ribs went for about two hours and 45 minutes so a little shy of three hours which is kind of what we're shooting for it's a little hot and fast rib they cooked at around 300 degrees plus or minus about five or ten degrees throughout the entirety of the cook you saw how we prepped them you saw how we cooked them you saw how we checked them inside now is the moment of truth when we pulled these off the grill we knew they were done for a couple of reasons one of them is because the racks themselves had a lot of bend to them. And that's one of the things we want is we want those racks to have a lot of bend. The other reason we knew they were done is we put a probe in them and we probed between the bones and it felt very soft in between the bones. I don't normally temp ribs because you can always tell by the tenderness of them by the way they kind of wiggle. But if you're shooting for a temp on ribs, you hit around 205 and you're probably just about done. So these ones are very tender. This right here is our Hasty Bake Rub and Spice ribs. And then the second rack back here is gonna be our gourmet Greek ribs. One of the other reasons that's really nice of putting these things meat side down is when you have that glaze in the bottom, that, that honey and the seasoning that we mixed in the bottom and the meat stays in there, it does a nice job of glazing the top of these ribs. So when you flip them back over, they look wet, they look glazed like you sauced them, but you didn't end up having to put a bunch of cheap sauce on them and ruin all the hard work you did putting really good smoke and really good care onto the bark. These look absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna go ahead and take them off and get them cut. one and rack two. I want you to see the bark and the color that we were able to achieve on those ribs. That char mixes with the honey, with the seasoning. It does a wonderful job of giving us a nice crunchy bite through without being too hard or too crunchy. Not too salty, not too sweet. A really good blend of flavors and balances. And the color on these absolutely turned out phenomenal. Can't wait to cut into them. So we flip them over, kind of look where the bone's going. Use your knife as a guide and just slide them right on through. Now one of the things you need to be aware when you do a hot and fast rib is even though these ribs are gonna be really tender, they're not gonna have the same bite that a low and slow rib is have. So they'll still break apart, they'll still fall apart, but they're gonna have just a little bit of a steakier bite to them, meaning they'll be a little bit more tug, they'll be a little bit more chew. Personally, I like that. I don't like ribs that just fall apart in a mush. But try them and experiment with them. See if it's something that you actually really like. If not, you can always go back to low and slow. But this is a great option to make ribs either on a weeknight or on a weekend when you got a lot of stuff going on. It only took two hours and 45 minutes to get these things done, and they're going to be absolutely killer. Now, 
just for the sake of science, I'm gonna have to try both of these. Give it a shot. Mmm. Great bite through. Perfect amount of sweetness. Didn't have any tug at all. Just ever so slightly enough to leave a mark. They're not overly sweet at all, which is good. I like pork, but I do not like it to be overly sweet. That's really hard to beat. That was our rub and spice rib. Now the ones I'm really interested in are these, these Greek ribs. These have a totally different flavor profile. They have a darker color. It looks like that salt actually kind of went to work even more so on these ribs than it did on the other. Let's see how these turned out. Man alive. I did not expect these to have that much flavor. I knew they were gonna be good, but the amount of flavor that comes on these, absolutely stunning. That honey powder comes through, some of the different peppers come through. Now this right here is something that I'm unbelievably proud of. I'm gonna be using Greek on ribs more often. You guys, you gotta try these. Again, the really nice thing about it is it's a really low commitment. It's not a five or six hour smoke. It's a three hour smoke, you get them done really quick. Give them a shot at home. Try your favorite rub on them. Play around, enjoy them. Just don't be afraid to mess around with these recipes because there's always something really neat you can do when you combine charcoal with really good ingredients. So give that a shot. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe, follow us on Facebook, on social media, on Instagram. We'd love to hear from you guys. We'll see you next week. Thanks for being here.